Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. The gardening season is wrapping up and gardeners have lots of questions. Today we're going to answer some of them. It's the Q&A show just ahead on the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Every growing season brings new challenges to gardeners. This year, we have received hundreds of questions. Today, we're going to show you some that we answered but did not have time to put in the show. Let's start with a question about getting rid of privet. I am trying to get rid of Chinese privet four feet away from a 25-year-old oak tree. How do I use glyphosate but not harm the tree? I have 53.9% glyphosate. I would appreciate any advice you can give me. Thank you, and this is Terry. All right, so dwelling here, yeah, 53.9% glyphosate is, yeah, anything over 41% is, is, is good. good. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna affect those privets. Oh, it's definitely gonna do that, so it's gonna be good. I usually say, you know, a three to 5% solution, and that's usually about four to six fluid ounces per gallon of water. Mm -hmm. um, but you and I talked about this a little bit, so yeah. would you be concerned about using oh, a spray next yes. to the oak tree? Because you don't know how little wind ah, it will take yeah. to have overdrift that would get, get to his other right. nice trees. Right. I would tend to want to cut, even if it's not all the way down, but at least cut, I know it, because privet could be really tall. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I would ha tend to want to cut it down at some point and just treat the actual stumps that are left or the little bit of foliage that's left. Um, I don't want to, I definitely would never spray glyphosate above my head. Oh, right, sure, sure. Never yeah, yeah. would do that. Right. Um, so yeah, I would tend to cut them and kind of just very carefully apply the glyphosate to the stems. Right. And you could do that with the concentrate. Yeah. Right, you just kind of paint it on the yeah. little stump. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, good. Okay, right. So if, if you're gonna, you know, do the foliar application, Ooh. you definitely got to be careful. Got to watch out for drift. Yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna do that, or if you're gonna do the basil uh, technique, as Joel had mentioned, yeah, just make sure you read and follow the label. I would cut it. I would probably use the pure concentrate yeah. with a brush or something. Yeah. A brush that stem or stump, uh, and uh, probably I actually, you know, make some little wounds you know, in that wood if mm -hmm. I could, yeah, just to allow the concentrate to really get down yeah. uh, into that vascular system, you know, of mm -hmm. that uh, privet, right? Let that turbo yeah. pressure pull it on down through the yeah. root systems. That's and right. that could work for you, Mr. Terry, mm -hmm. but read and follow the label. Yeah, just yeah. be very, be careful. don't spray above your head. Yeah, don't spray above your head, be careful. Uh, but yeah, 53.9%, that's fine. Yeah, five, three to 5% solution. You know, should get it, you know, for you. Mm -hmm. Just be careful, all right? How can I get rid of cut zoo? It arrived after Hurricane Katrina and is as fast growing. It is all over my fence and lawn. I pull and spray, but it keeps coming back. Thank you so much. And this is Deb from Metairie, Louisiana. So it's the old cut zoo. We know oh, it grows like, real yeah. fast. We know half of the South is covered in cut zoo. It's right? the plant that ate the South. It's the or plant that, that ate the South. That's exactly <laughs> what they say. So this is in a, sounds like in a lawn situation. Yeah. Right. So how does she get rid of it? Well, I think keeping it mowed. Ah, keeping it, just, just keep it mowed down, mm -hmm. keep it mowed down. And it may take several years oh, or it more. Will. It will. You know, because that stuff, I think, roots all the way to... China. <laughs> so yeah. it's going to just take patience and just keeping it mowed down. And if it's coming up her fence, she can just cut those big old vines off. And then I would just get some glyphosate sure and just would. paint it right on there, sure right would. on the cut, the cut part of the stem. And uh, that'll knock it back. That'll knock it back. Yeah, I would use glyphosate or triclopyr. You know, it's yeah, another which is old brush too. killer. Yeah, so right. I, I would That'll use that. Work. Yeah, read and follow the label. Just label. don't get it on anything you right. don't want to die. That's right. That's exactly right. And I think that will help, but yeah. Yeah. You gotta be persistent. Oh yeah, you that's gotta be persistent. You know, <laughs> other than just moving away and leaving it. <laughs> just leave it. <laughs> just leave it, yeah. Anything, Mr. Jones, you like to add to that? Oh, uh, cut the zoo? I know, just thinking about the story of the the people who bought a house and 
got rid of the kudzu and found a swimming pool. And, <laughs> and they asked the seller, and the seller said, no, I don't know about a swimming pool. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, oh, but gosh. it's a great yeah, story. Kudzu stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it will cover and take over. Please tell me the name of this plant. I have asked several people, but no one seems to know. Is this a weed or a flower? And this is C. Miller. Right? Weed or flower? I actually thought it was the old money plant. Yeah, it, yeah. it does look like that foliage. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm more used to seeing the stalk with the, the flowers and the yeah. seed heads uh -huh. on them. But that is the foliage, that, that what it looks like. I, I think it's the money plant, or some people call it uh, the annual. It's actually a biennial, mm -hmm. but they call it the uh, honesty. You know, plant. Yeah. So uh, if if he's had it before and it's not bloom, it may not bloom this year if it's the first time he's yeah. seen it come up. Mm -hmm. So he may not get a, a stalk on it this yeah. year. But it can get away from you. Yeah. The, so, those seeds. Oh man. Yeah. So yeah. make sure, C. Miller, you have it in the area where it's contained, yeah. uh, because the old money plant can't get away uh, from you. But yeah, beautiful blooms, right? Beautiful. And I understand. Uh, you know, some of the blooms are actually used in flower arrangement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah, well, and then when it dries, and the I usually cut mm -hmm. would cut off, go. My, my mother would also do it, cut off the stalks, take, collect the seeds so okay. they don't go everywhere, yeah. take the outside, and there's a nice shimmering membrane on the inside, and we used it as decoration in the house. So, real pretty. Real pretty, C. Miller. So, yeah, honesty of the old money plant, all right? It could be a weed or fire, just depends it's on how you look at it. Depends on how you, right? and where it's so growing. It, and where it's growing, how about that? We purchased a home a few years ago that has two very large apovidae in the backyard. They were so large, we expected that they had reached full size. However, they have continued to widen and are crowding other areas in our yard. The largest is about 20 feet in diameter. Can they be pruned? Any tips or advice is welcome. Thank you, and this is Edward from Prattville, Alabama. Ah. So, they are large. Yeah, they are large. We appreciate the picture. Yes. Nice swimming pool there. Yes. Uh, Mr. Edward. Um, so, can they be pruned though? Well, yes, they can be. I, and just when they thought it was mature, you know, nothing stops growing yeah. until it's gone, until right. it's dead. So, so yeah, it, even though it's reached its mature size, it can get even bigger if it still likes it there and is doing well. But I would prune it in the spring, because that's usually when yeah. you prune evergreens like that. But I wouldn't prune but a few inches at a time, yeah. because if you go back to dead wood, it, the likelihood of it coming out being the age that it is, is less. So if you are, you can prune it, but I would just do a few inches so it's still green on the outside. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm with that as well. Something I like to always mention, I would do regular annual prunings, yeah. right, to reduce Just, size. Yeah. Instead of one drastic oh, pruning. Yes. Uh, which could be the death, you know, of that tree because, yeah, it's a pretty large tree. It's, pretty it's probably large. been there for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you said, if you cut it all the way back to... <laughs> to so where it's yeah. no, not green anymore, then it's going to be, be less likely to, to come back out. Right. So regular annual pruning mm -hmm. to reduce the size. A few size. inches. Right. At a time. Mm -hmm. All right. But if you're going to prune, again, that'll be in the spring. In the spring. I think I planted my sumac too close to the house. Can I move it to another location without killing it? This is Michelle on YouTube. So Jesse, what do you think about that? It's too close to the house. Well, I'll just say it? that I've been trying to <laughs> get my own sumac oh, here we go. Okay. from uh, the side of the road or the edge of a bed. I'll dig up a little sumac and I'll try and get some root and they never make it. So I don't think you're going to have good luck trying to move that yeah. sumac. Um, and it's really not going to harm the foundation of your house. Their roots aren't as strong as something like a big oak tree or something. Right. But um, you can just mow over if where you don't want it. Maybe just mow over or clip that down. And uh, that's probably your best bet. I love sumac. Yeah. It's one of my favorite shrubs. Okay. So I wish I had sumac too close to my house. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want too close to your house? <laughs> that's good. That's, I, that's I good think with the root system, yeah. it's going to be hard to transplant yeah. it. Um, it's possible, but it, possible. It, it, there's no guarantee that if you move it, it's going to survive. So right plant right place yeah i think it's a lesson in that right because yeah when you have little plants right little mm -hmm. plants become big plants exactly so you have to be wherever you're planting 
uh, them. But yeah, the root system to me, uh, getting that root ball is the bigger issue, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, I read a publication not too long ago. It's like for every inch diameter of a trunk, you need 16 to 24 inch root ball. Oh, I mean, wow. so think about that. Yeah. So you got to get a lot of you know those roots, right? Uh, and then, of course, if you wanted to try to transplant, the best time to do that would be later in the year, right? In the fall, right? Yeah. Right. You can probably get away with it early spring, but late in the fall would be the best time to do that. Yeah, so in the meantime, Jesse says it's gonna be tough. My hydrangea had not bloomed in two years. What can I do to help them bloom? Should I have the soil tested? Add a different fertilizer? They are lush and green and very big, but no blooms. Should I cut them back in the fall? And this is Joyce from Durham, North Carolina. So Mr. John, what do you think about that? Well, I know that there are hydrangeas that bloom on, on new wood and there are hydrangeas that bloom on old wood. And I just wonder if, if, uh, if they're cutting it back at the wrong time. Um, that's you know, just a thought. And it's actually a good thought, you know, yeah. Doc, you know this, so, yeah, yeah there's always questions and confusion about right. when to prune them back, which, when which, not. Well, that and which yeah. hydrangea do you have? Right. Mm -hmm. Which we don't there's know. There's so right. many out there right. now. There's so many. You right. know, they, they've got those that bloom all the time, yeah. the ever-blooming ones now, yeah. so it's, it's, it's sometimes, that's a hard question. It is a hard question, because we don't know exactly right, what it which is. one it yeah, is. Yeah, which one it is. Um, so yeah, let's just speculate a little bit. So of course, we always say get the soil tested. That will help. Yes. Um, but yeah, if you just have lush green foliage and no blooms, I mean, what comes to mind though? I would think it was the big leaf hydrangea. Okay. You know, the one that's a macrophylla. Okay, okay. You know, the one that has the blue and the, the pink. Blue. Yeah. Because that thing sometimes can be sort of finicky about when it does bloom. Okay. I don't think we're gonna have, mine are not gonna bloom this year because they got totally killed to the ground. Right, right, and right. And they're coming out with new right. growth. Because of the, yeah, uh -huh. because of the winter and freeze. it's just not yeah. mature enough to have any, blo I don't think it will. Okay. Do y'all, have you seen any years with any flower buds? No, I haven't, no. Yeah. It's been slow, slow. Um, so yeah. dependent, but she's had that happening for two years. Yeah, it's two years though. So it's two years, so. Well, maybe it's been, where is, where is that prune? So it's Durham, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Right, so I'm thinking maybe the pruning, uh, yeah. but yeah, so fertilizing. Maybe the cold. Maybe the cold know. is something else. Uh, to consider as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, anytime you know, I think about you know, a lot of foliage though and no blooms, I always think. Maybe over fertilizer. Over fertilizer. With nitrogen. Yeah. Right, that's the first thing I think about. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Then two, coupled with environmental stresses that we right. talked about before. Um, does she say about the light? Sun? She does not. She does not. So if it's real, real right. deep shade, that's right. you know, it's not going to bloom as well if right. you've got some morning sun. Okay. Yeah, that was good. I'm glad you brought that up. So they have Miss Joyce. Yeah, it would help us to know, you know <laughs> which hydrangea we're talking about. But we do suspect pruning uh, could be an issue, and over fertilizing could be one as well. What are some good substitutes from Leyland Cypress? Uh, I know they have problems, but I want the same look. And this is Sue from Germantown, Tennessee. So a good substitute for Leyland Cypress. Right, so what do you think, Jesse? Well, my first thought was an Arborvitae. Mm -hmm. I've got a little baby hair for you. Um, has the same look. It's evergreen. It's native. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get super huge. Grows pretty quickly. Yeah, um, also, maybe an eastern red cedar. Yeah. And they're going to get pretty big, but they're they're both very uh, trouble-free plants. Yeah. And, I, l I love both of them. I, I you were talking well. about a few cultivars. Yeah, so for the Arborvitae, you know, a couple that I know they grow well in this area would be Emerald is mm -hmm. one, Green Giant is the other one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the Eastern Red Cedar is mm -hmm. something to consider. Japanese Cedars, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you consider those as well. And then there, there's some others, you know, just depending on your look, you mm -hmm. know, what you, what you really want. Uh, I'm thinking about there's some uh, Verbena. Uh, oh. Viburnum. You know, Viburnum, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Viburnum, they actually, uh, you know, could serve as a, you know, if, if you're using them for a screen. Right. Right. So there's some vibranium that I think it might work in that area. Some hollies I just thought about. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sorry. You know, foster holly, you know, mm -hmm. is one that I thought about. In I was going to say inkberry ah, is inkberry. another one. Okay. It's a native mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. And it kind of depends too how tall you want it. Yeah, how tall you want it. So yeah. right. they didn't say how tall yeah. they want it. The Leland cypress obviously grows really fast, grows really fast. which can be a problem. Right. So right. I think looking into how tall you want that yeah. kind of uh, privacy area so yeah do a little homework on that but yeah again you know some hollies you know arborvitae you Looking know the cedars options. you know there's some different options there and, and let me address this about the Leyland cypress the reason why we don't recommend it and i'm saying we as the extension service is because of a disease ceridium canker 
right? So mm -hmm. that's why we always tell people don't plant a monoculture of right. the same plant material because if one goes out and goes down, right. it's hard to replace them at that same size, right? right? So, you know, we want to stay away from those monocultures, right? We want you to learn, you know, to have a diversity of plants, right? Not like right. the farmer's field, right. you know, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, that's why we've actually taken it off our plant list because of ceridium canker. Okay. So maybe right. add a couple of the options. Yeah. Yeah. I think those will be good. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Sue. And we do have a publication at our extension office about, you know, screen plantings. You know, so go to uthort.com or come to your local extension office. We'll help you out. We purchased this semi-dwarf crepe myrtle tree three years ago. When we purchased it, it was flowering. It has not flowered since. We live in zone 10, the tree is in full sun, and we have given it nitrogen, Epsom salt, and potassium. What do we need to do to have flowers? It hasn't had buds since we bought it. And this is Charlene from Millbrae, California. From zone so, 10 in California. Zone 10 in California, how about mm -hmm. that? So mm -hmm. what do you think about that? So it's not flowering. I don't, no buds yeah, or anything. No buds. Now I've had them do that if they maybe you pruned them too severely That's early in the year, yeah. you know? And I know though they flower on new growth, right, right. but still if you do any pruning during the growing season, you know, you're gonna kind of delay that, but that's kind of a mystery, you know? And it's yeah. getting full sun, it's getting fertilizer. It's getting fertilizer. The thing about the fertilizer, I have a question about those, the Epsom salt. Ah, uh, magnesium. Mm -hmm. It's magnesium. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, a little bit more phosphorus mm. possibly would help. For the, the flowering. flowering. Yeah, for right. the flowering, that's true. Yeah. Phosphorus is supposed to encourage the flowering. That's right. The so flowers. that's that's the question I have about is the Epsom yeah. salt. The use so of maybe the they Epsom need salt. to do a soil test. I would do a soil test and kind of yeah. see what the nutrient levels are, if the pH is right or what. But that's exactly what yeah. I would do. Mr. John, anything you want to add to that? No, I, w I was thinking the phosphorus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime I hear flowers, I think about yeah, yeah. phosphorus. And, you know, we talk about Epsom salt, which is magnesium. Right. 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 So get that soil tested. Uh, yeah, watch the pruning though. I mean, that is something yeah. you have to look out for. All of my tomato plants are beautiful and green and producing, but my tomatoes are not really red. They have streaks of yellow and some have bruises or something. I had the pH tested and it was normal. Is there any way to correct this? Thanks for any help that you can provide. And this is Jenna from Arlington, Tennessee. Mm. Well, I guess we have an example mm. of the yep. question. Yep, so we got a good one. one here. Yeah, it's real this good. Is, uh, this is an example of the bullseye mm -hmm. spots that come on tomatoes when they've got anthracnose. Yeah. So that's the problem that you're going to get. I mean, he's not alone. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. have it on my tomatoes, and I've sprayed with the fungicides and things, and you're just, you know, you're just not going to get rid of something like that when it first starts. And right. you got wet weather. Yeah. You know, we got rain, I think forecasted off and on for a while. So, and the blotching, that that's a problem, you know, where they don't ripen, you get this yellow kind of blotching through here. And that that is high humidity, mm -hmm. high temperatures. And mm -hmm. I also read that if he's got lush plants, they're real green and a lot of canopy on them. And if he's caged them and they're upright, it may be these are just not getting the sun they oh, need okay. to yellow, yeah. I mean, to red on right. up. And uh, if he did, a, I read what he said about the pH. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, did he actually get a soil test or, to know yeah, if it's got the between. N, the P, and the K? Because right. something I read said that uh, lack of potassium can cause irregular ripening. And I also yeah. read, and I didn't know this, that there are varieties that are less prone to doing this. Okay. But I don't know if I've ever read that on a label. Have you? I have not. So I don't know how I you would not. find those cultivars that, that are less prone to the blotching and the, the yellow shoulders. Right. You know, mine have yeah. a lot of the yellow shoulders where it just gets that old hard core. Yeah, exactly and that's more or less the same thing going on. High temps, high humidity, you know. The old environmental stresses, which you can't oh, do yeah, anything about. Oh yeah, you can't do anything about that. Right. But, I, but I would definitely mulch, you know. Oh yeah, mulching, yeah. You know, would definitely, you know, help. Maybe a little crop rotation. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, this fungus will build up you know, That's true. The well, yeah, the anthracnose right. for so sure. It definitely will build up in the soil. Yeah. Um, and then, just yeah, hope for a good hope year. For, yeah, hope for a good year. <laughs> hope, hope for a good good, year. good weather year. Wow. Because we've had some extreme weather, so hey, it's showing have. up in our vegetable gardens, in our landscapes, obviously. Right. You know, it, so. it definitely has. Would you still eat this tomato? 
Yeah. yeah that's cut it Shoot, out. Shoot, yeah. I just yeah. cut that just bad cut place out. out. You know, <laughs> birds peck mine. I just cut the bird pecks yeah. out and keep going. <laughs> I keep going. Yeah, I would definitely Shoot, eat. I love tomatoes. I'm not going to let the little it. critters get them. I just cut that out. It's not yeah, going to be a problem. Yeah, it's all right. And then it might, it might red up a little bit, it might. you know, in the, in the house or on the porch. It might. You know, put it in there with a banana or an apple or something. Yeah, Get that apple Yeah, let it go and ripen on up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a yeah, this is a perfect example of concentric <laughs> yeah. rings. I mean that's a good tomato, eye, you know. Right, with the that. yellow streaks. So Yeah, 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 that's that's not not uncommon. Yeah, it's not uncommon. Not this year anyway. Our yard service put down black mulch. The yard looked great, but after a couple of weeks in rain, we see this ugly, gross mess around the tree in my flower beds. It looks like a cancer growing out of the mulch, and after a couple of days, it turns brown. It looks like a mess. Is this bad mulch or cheap mulch the workers bought? We paid a good price for it. <laughs> what can we do about this? And this is Jerry from Memphis, Tennessee. He said they paid a good price for that. Yeah. So what do you think, Mary? Well, I think slime mold. <laughs> slime mold, right? right? It's a really interesting common name. Mm hmm. Yeah. It resembles dog, dog vomit. vomit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> dog vomit. Dog yeah. vomit okay. is right. sometimes yeah. the common yeah. name. <laughs> um, I, like I, don't, I don't think necessarily it's bad mulch or cheap mulch, but it's, it's fairly common to see it it's in common. mulch. It loves wet mm -hmm. and hot, mm -hmm. um, which I think he even said it rained and then it showed yeah, up. Yeah, it rained and showed up. Right. So, one thing you can do is kind of dry out that mulch so rake it around a little bit dry mm -hmm. underneath where it's coming up but it, it's not harmful it disappear on its own as well yeah not harmful get it up rake it out scoop it out you know right. you're going to see it right after rainfall especially in the spring definitely you know, what not to do is to spray it with your hose to try and break it up because that's just adding more moisture yeah, right so. right right and you're spreading the spores around too so right. that's something to think about but yeah it'll yeah. go away after about a you know week or so i sure. actually have some in my flower bed right now yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks gross, but it looks fun all at the same time. I actually uh, saw a Nova show recently about slime molds, and they're, they're, they have a, sort of a, an intelligence that they don't quite understand yet, the way they travel around. So yeah. do check that out. Do check that out. How about that slime mold? <laughs> slime right? mold. No dog <laughs> All right. So there you go, Jerry. Yeah. Again, just feeding on decaying organic material, which is, which is the mulch. Exactly. I've been having problems with cinch bugs in my lawn. How can I stop them? I tried chemical granules, but that has not worked. And this is Welton from Louisiana. Ah. So, the old cinch bugs. Yes. Right, right. So what I do think, you think about that? I think he's done right. Okay. Uh, but in his part of the country, cinch bugs have several <sighs> life cycles mm -hmm. in, a, in the growing season. So he's probably, is controlling some of the life cycles, but not the adults or the what, adults. what's what's there. So yeah, yeah. he's going to have to kind of do a two prong approach. But I mean, the granules are probably going to work for future generations. I should work. Just not the one that's still right there. Yeah, very active in the summertime, but they're also there in the, the fall. Yeah. End of the year. So yeah, that's why I always say it's always important to know life cycles, mm -hmm. right? The adults and the nymphs. They suck plant juice, right? So they're definitely going to be stressing the lawn out. But the grain use will be fine. You know, mm -hmm. I know here, uh, if you use a chemical, mm -hmm. of course, uh, bifenthrin is one that we do mm -hmm. recommend, and permethrin is another yes. one. Uh, so just make sure that you're using uh, those, and those apply for Louisiana yes. uh, as, as well. Uh, check with your local extension office there. They will have uh, some information for you on controlling those cinch bugs. But yeah, knowing the life cycle is so important. Yeah. Then, of course, getting good coverage. <laughs> Yeah. You know, with your granules, right? Because yeah. you have to make sure you get that down, make sure you get them watered in, yeah. uh, and that should do the trick for you. And I know, you know, just from the past, um, you know, talking to some of the, the lawn folk, like uh, Mr. Booker T. Lee, the lawn guy, mm -hmm. uh, usually if you have like 25 to 30, you know, cinch bugs per square foot, that's a lot. That's, that's, right. That's they recommend treating, you know, yes. at that point. Uh, but yeah, just read the label, uh, make sure you're using the right chemical, and I think you'll be fine. Hello, there are earwigs everywhere. What can I do? How can I get rid of them? Anonymous from San Diego, California. So Mary, what do you think about earwigs? Well, earwigs um, don't get into your ears, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that out there. Um, right. They're insects mm -hmm. and they are attracted to decomposing things. Mm -hmm. 
So it's possible if you have a tree that's dying or something like that, they may be attracted to it, but they're um, harmless. Yeah, they're harmless. So yeah. they look a little intimidating, yeah. but um, totally harmless to people. Yeah, I, I think they're harmless. Uh, they're plant decomposers mm -hmm. is, is what I think mm -hmm. they are. Uh, of course, they have chewing mouth parts. They have mm -hmm. the little pinchers at the right. end. Pinchers. Uh, they don't hurt. Right. I think some people get them in their houses. They do. And right. um, that can be a, an issue for some people, mm -hmm. but uh, trying to keep any sort of debris that might be on the ground or yeah. under under your sink or in the kitchen corner of the floor, just keeping that clean will usually get rid of the problem. Or if you have damp yeah. areas, try and dry them out, maybe a dehumidifier. And that's the key, right? So we have to know a little bit about, you know, where they like to be, mm -hmm. right? The environments, right? So dark, moist environments. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can correct those, then right. you shouldn't have a problem with them. Yeah, because I wouldn't recommend, you know, using a pesticide. Yeah, they're, they're, harmless. they're harmless. Yeah, they're, they're harmless. Yeah. Right. Again, plant decomposers, they will, you know, chew on some plant material, but they're looking for decaying plant matter. Mm -hmm. And also uh, dead insects. They okay. actually feed on dead insects. Oh. Um, so, so decomposer is really important <laughs> yeah, to important. the environment too, right? right? So they're right. recycling those things back into the soil. Right. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org and the mailing address is familyplot7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching and sending in the questions. If you want to find out more about any of the questions we answered today, head on over to familyplotgarden.com. We also have the answers to about a thousand viewer questions on the site. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe.